almost two weeks after this couple in Fiji from Texas mysteriously passed away, the hospital ward is still in isolation mode. There's a sign on the door that says, Do not enter without authorization. And this is an article from 7 June 2019. This was yesterday at 11.30. And here's a picture of the actual sign. Now there's another article that says they passed away, pardon me, around Memorial Day. Around Memorial Day. Now, and that's this one right here. This is also June 7. Um, that one was from 11 in the morning. This is from 4.30 in the evening. And it says right here, David and Michelle Paul died around around Memorial Day. So you're telling me by 7 June, from Memorial Day, they don't have a time of death? They couldn't say that he died this date, she died that date? Around Memorial Day. Really. So that should tell you that something is being hidden. They are attempting to drive this off of the headlines. And, of course, the headline here is, the investigation will be done by next Friday, which will make it about three weeks. You know, this these two articles probably should tell you all you would ever need to know about what is going on in Fiji. They were killed by something that the powers that be, whoever you want to assign this to, they don't want it getting out. They don't want you to know the truth because they are afraid of what the ramifications are going to be of that truth. And I guess part of me um, doesn't blame them given some of the things that I've seen in the comment section, I've tried to maintain a calm and sane and rational voice about this, but I can see how some people would change their behaviors in a way that it could probably cost a lot of people a lot of money, and this is what this is really about. I would like to touch on something that I have been talking about a little bit lately. And it sets off a lot of snowflakes, the whole issue with Bitcoin. Because people think that somehow my pushing it or my selling it is somehow enriching or profiting me. Let me be very clear. I'm not selling you my Bitcoin. If you go buy Bitcoin tomorrow, it, I don't make any money on that. I'm just giving you good options. And I'm going to debunk something in today's video that is the one of the big arguments. Well, what if the power goes out? What if the power goes out? It's all based on the internet. The power has gone out in Venezuela multiple times, over and over and over again. And they still use cryptocurrency everywhere. It's more prevalent in Venezuela probably than anywhere else in the world. And real quick, you know what? We're just going to go to that right now. I was going to do something else first, but we're just going to go ahead and we're going to play this video. I'm going to show you how easy it is to walk into a church's chicken in Venezuela and pay using cryptocurrency. Now, this is Dash. This isn't technically Bitcoin, but it's the same idea. You ready? It is a little bit hard to hear just because of they're in an open environment. So just basically watch and see how easy this is. She opens her wallet, her crypto wallet, hands the phone to the guy. He scans a QR code and she pays. Wallet in the phone and I'm not. I put my 
scan QR code. I should give the phone to him. And that's it. I accept the, uh, the amount for the lunch. Put my pin again. You don't feel the, the amount. And that's it. Okay, so that's how complicated that is. Now, here's the thing about that. You notice how she had to put in her pin and then open up her wallet. He scanned it, went back to her. She had to confirm it, put her pin in again, and it's done. Now, let's say she walks five minutes down the road and she loses her phone. That cryptocurrency is useless. Absolutely, totally useless to anybody who finds that phone. Why? <clears throat> because they don't have the pin. Your cash, your gold, incredibly useful to people who would rob you. Now, what I wanted to do earlier, and this explains this better, I want to talk about community. Yesterday we did a, vi a video where we talked about, in Venezuela, how there's areas that have been forced to barter. And a lot of you came back and said, well, see, that's capitalism, that's capitalism. No, it's not. You know why it's not capitalism? Where's the profit? You see, the idea in bartering is making an even trade. Meaning, I have this thing that I need, and you have something you need, and we can make an even exchange where we both get the same equivalent benefit with no currency necessary. See, there's, there's no profit motive in bartering. So, let's say, for example, you have a community, and you've got Bob here, and Bob spends all his day chopping wood, and he separates it out into tinder and kindling and fuel wood, and then you've got uh, Sally, and she spends the day tending her um, herb garden, and she has the best seasonings around, you know, and then her sister has spent the day out picking whatever the local fruit is. Now, these are just stock images, and I'm using them to drive home a point. You know, and then there's, uh, you know, their mom who has um, just great fishing secrets and can just, you know, bring them in. Then there's a group of ladies that have spent the day um, offering to uh, do laundry while people are out doing whatever it is they do to, to help the community. You know, then there's Mike, you know, and he's, he's disabled, but he can still bring something that is of benefit to the whole group. You know, there's even this young woman who has spent the day making soaps so that people can have, have a, you know, some soap to take home and to bathe with. All sorts of different kinds. You know, and then there's this, this older guy down the road and he spent the day teaching, you know, and uh, showing history to, you know, your local community group's children so that, you know, there can be some level of education going on. You know that everybody gets together and brings together what they have, what they have um, contributed. But nobody here is worried about profit motive. Everybody here is worried about contributing in a way that everybody benefits from everyone else. And you can take the seasonings, and you can season the fish, and you can add the fruit, and you can put the fire, firewood on the fire. And, you know, people can pick up their clean clothes from the day before and sit around and have community and bless each other. And not one person goes home worrying about, gosh, I wonder how much profit I made today. You see, the Bible says the love of money, more accurately, the love of currency, is the root of all evil. Some have strayed, pierced themselves with many sorrows. Is that not true? Isn't this pursuit of currency, of currency, done this? You see, there are people that have pulled a fast one on you. Because even in the best barter system, there probably has to be some type of medium. Yesterday, it was coffee beans, what we showed in Venezuela. Now, not everybody had a need for a cup of coffee. But it was something that they knew that, generally speaking, was ubiquitous and could be easily weighed and determined to be what it was. There's a certain group of people that have snookered you 
into believing that gold is not just a currency, but it's an asset. Turning currencies into assets is the big mistake. Because then you have the ability to hoard and enter into profit motive. We're simply increasing for its own sake is what you're going for. You're not worried about helping or contributing in your community. You're worried about taking advantage of. How can I screw my neighbor over? How can I get the better end of this deal? See, that all had to go away in Venezuela. They had to, when it was down to it, they had to take care of each other. And even when they lost all of the internet and they lost all of, you know, power over and over again, cryptocurrency still works. Do you know why it still works? Because it hasn't morphed. The powers that be have, and every government in the world hates this, by the way. And the super rich elites, the wealthy, they hate this because it's not an asset. They can't hoard it. They can't hoard it and use it to manipulate their amount of it that they hold to manipulate anyone else. Because there's a limited supply of it. This is why there are people out there teaching you that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, oh, stay away, mark of the beast. Oh, no, you shouldn't have this. They have a vested interest in you staying in possession of those little green notes that have Illuminati and satanic symbols scrolled all over them. A little closer to the mark of the beast, if you ask me, than a digital currency that is only a currency. And some are starting to see it. Some are starting to understand it. Because you'd have to ask yourself a question. In this place, Venezuela, where the power goes out, allegedly, all the time, the internet goes down all the time, why is Dash so popular? It was a lifeline. It saved the people of Venezuela. And no one has been able to answer that debunk. How is it in a place where there isn't a reliable power source, where there isn't reliable internet, how is it that cryptocurrency is so prevalent and so useful? You see, that's the thing. It doesn't just erase if you power off your phone or your, your phone dies. You don't just lose crypto. And the idea that the entire internet all around the world, the entire power grid of the entire planet is going to all go down simultaneously and stay down so that all of the hard drives lose all of their information. If that's the basis upon which you are making your financial decisions, you're right. What I'm saying isn't going to make any sense. And this should tell you more than what you need to know. If this guy's against it, you should be for it. If Warren Buffett is against it, you should be for it. If these people are who you're taking your advice from, and you find yourself agreeing with Katy Perry and Warren Buffett, you might want to take a look at uh, your decision-making process, your value system. Because as for me and my house, we're not going to uh, let the ideas of uh, party affiliation or uh, God worship of a certain leader in power now, override common sense or override biblical teaching of what right and wrong is. I'd rather have this every night than any amount of profit. Knowing that my neighbors spend their days doing things to benefit me and the rest of our neighbors and not worrying about trying to take advantage of us, trying to get an angle on us. I'd like to have my group have a different view. And if you want to call that socialist, fine. Call it socialist. Continue to chase your goblin gold. Continue to chase ideas 
like this. You know, we all get played. We all get schnookered from time to time. It's only when you see the truth and because you're ashamed of having made a mistake and you stay with the mistake that it becomes a problem. I hope I was able to get the idea across here that I was going for. That we all got played. Every one of us got played. Because there's a group of people that want you to think that simple currency is an asset and the hoarding of it and the accumulation of it makes you wealthy. It doesn't. In fact, quite the opposite. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And from the book of Luke, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of the covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Like, share, subscribe.